Hello, welcome back to my Solar Journeys series. So, one of the things that many people consider when they are buying solar panels is the payback period and how much money they, they can make from exporting excess generation. I've got um, a few videos on this, so if you look back through my channel, I'll probably put some links up here to them. Um, you can check out the sort of uh, money that I predict I will make from my own generation. But the question is, how do you get this money in? Bit of background first. Uh, about 10 years ago, probably a bit over, um, the UK government had a scheme called FIT, which was the feed-in tariff, and it was in to encourage people to have solar panels. And the way that the FIT tariff worked was that for every kilowatt uh, what hour of electricity you generated from your solar panels they would pay you for and then they predicted that you would send half of it back to the grid and then pay you for that half again um, so these tariffs reduced slowly over the between uh, 2010 and 2019 so at the very beginning they were quite high they were up to about 60p per kilowatt hour um, so you would if you generated a thousand kilowatt Oh, uh, a thousand, oh, yeah, a thousand kilowatt hours in a year. They would pay you sixty p per kilowatt hour, which is about six hundred pounds. And then they would consider that you, uh, or guess that you um, exported half of that. So they would pay you for half again, which would be another three hundred pounds. So you get nine hundred pounds a year, effectively, for your generation. Of course, back in the very early days of solar panels, the solar panels were less efficient. Uh, you would only get roughly a 200 watt panel on average. Now you're getting around a 400 watt panel. So you were generating less electricity, but you were getting big paybacks. As I say, this uh, tariff then dropped off um, over the decade and was replaced um, a few years ago by SEG, which is Smart Export Guarantee. And the way this tariff works is that every kilowatt hour you export you can sell it back to an energy company like British Gas or E.ON one of these and they would pay you for that export um, the um, amount that you get paid for that um, export is dependent on what company you go for so I'm getting my information for this video from the ecoexperts.co.uk and I'm on their solar panels uh, smart export guarantee page but according to this um, companies which have over uh, 150,000 domestic electricity companies have to offer uh, a SEG tariff <clears throat> So they also on this website, they give the current rates that um, these co that companies are paying, and this was updated on the seventh of February, twenty twenty three. So the average amount that you can get paid for a kilowatt hour is around the five p mark. It has gone up slightly since I applied for mine last September, but if we just look at sort of Scottish Power, that's paying five and a half p. So Energy, which I'm with, is five p. Shell Energy is three and a half p, EDF one one and a half pence, and then you've got two big tariffs at the top, which are Tesla, which requires you to have a Powerwall two battery, pays twenty four p per kilowatt hour of export, and Octopus Energy pays fifteen p per um, kilowatt hour of export. When you actually look through these prices, you have to be a little bit careful because, like that octopus one there, you already have to be an octopus customer. If you're not an octopus customer, then you only get 4.1p because you're not actually tied into your import supplier. So we are importing from British Gas, but we're exporting to So Energy. So that's the first thing to consider. Um, you may be also be asking the question, why is the difference between the price of import compared to the price of export is so different. And I don't really know the answer. I've seen the excuse that these companies have used, which is it takes a lot of admin to process these um, SEG payments, um, which I'm not quite sure I believe. Um, I think it's more that there's a sort of a general price that's being paid and people are just working on that. Because as you can see, things like Tesla and Octopus can pay a lot more. If, um, so there's no reason why these other companies can't pay that bit extra as well. 
So the next thing is, how do you apply for these uh, tariffs? So unlike um, the general comparison websites where you can actually swap en energy companies, so um, go compare or myenergy.com, I think there's one which allows you to um, basically swap energy suppliers. They don't seem to have anything on the uh, smart export guarantee at the moment, so you have to go into the actual websites. And each company has a similar um, way of applying, although the amount of information you need for each of them does vary. So when I was looking to set up my SEG tariff last uh, September, I went through the ones at basically the top of this list on this website to see who were paying the most. Um, and I think it was Scottish Power at the time were um, offering a little bit more. They were offering about 6p per kilowatt hour. But when I went on their website to try and apply for it, it was really, really complicated. Um, because of the amount of documentation they ask, actually ask you to provide. Um, so that's why I ended up going for a slightly lower tower of so, because it was just easier to apply for. So when you apply for them, they will give you a form to fill out, which obviously contains your name, your address, um, and just general details. They then ask you for a series of documents. So I think all of them will ask for a microgeneration certificate, um, which is the MCS. So when you have your installation, they should uh, provide your installers will provide the certificate. Um, you need proof of purchase of your installation, so i.e. the paid invoice. Um, so you need proof that you've paid, um, which you need to send. Uh, you need to have a photo of your export reading. So f in order for these um, export tariffs, you need to be on a smart meter, and that smart meter needs to be able to read the import and export every 30 minutes. Um, so most, when you have a smart meter installed, it will automatically be set for... Um, import and it will have a registration which is something like an MPAN I think it's called so that's the number that you get when you set up a uh, have an export you need to also configure that smart meter to have an export MPAN as well which you need to submit um, so this is uh, what you need for that um, if you have a battery storage device, which I think most people are now getting, uh, you need to have a um, circuit diagram of how that is linked to your inverter and the system. Um, so again, this should be provided from your um, installers. And if you will live in a uh, business, you may also need your VAT number and company number for that. And that's all from the... Um, Scottish power. Um, as I say, I went with So Energy, which required a little bit less documentation, so it was a bit easier to apply for. But I did run into some problems. So, when you have a solo installation, um, the installers have to apply to your uh, the people basically who own the um, grid. So you're basically your uh, it's uh, the DNO, I think they're called. Um, for us, that's uh, Western Power. Um, to, and if you are having a solar system which is over 3.6 kilowatts, which we've got, we've got um, about 4.6, uh, uh, they have to get, uh, fill in something called a G99 form, which tells the um, Western Power that you're planning on generating more than that 3.6 uh, kilowatts. So... Um, my uh, installers, which was Green Glow Energy, um, had or Green Glow Limited, had um, filled in all this documentation. However, this is where things went a bit uh, awry. So when um, I, I contacted So Energy together, they had problems with the DNO trying to contact them um, because they were saying that we weren't registered, um, even though I had the. Um, email and the documentation from Green Glow with the uh, Western Power signature on it showing that they'd applied for it and agreed to, to it. Um, so that took a little bit of a while to sort out and the reason for that is because the DNO needed to program my smart meter to have that export MA, uh, MPA, MPAN, sorry, MAP. Um, so that um, 
took a little bit of time to sort out and also just the forms that the DNO wanted. Um, the Green Glow had supplied me with the G99A1 uh, form and the DNO wanted the G99A3 form which as far as I can tell is exactly the same form just laid out in a slightly different order um, with um, a few more boxes which are normally not applicable to a domestic um, installation. So uh, Green Glow and Mike Bray were actually really good about this. Um, I sent Mike an email saying, can I have this documentation and can you transfer this information on to another one? And they had sent it back to me within about two or three days. I then passed that on to So Energy, and then they went back and forth with the DNO, which did take them a bit of time. And in all fairness to So Energy, they did uh, backdate my payment to when I actually put in the application. So even though they didn't actually fully confirm until early December, which was two months after I applied, they backdated my payments to when I actually took my meter read in on the 21st of September when I initially applied for them. So that was uh, good. Um, they did apologise. They said that we, I was one of their, um, this is a brand new tariff for them, and um, I was one of their first people that had applied for it. So they were still find, trying to find the ropes. But overall, that's how I applied and some of the problems that I came across. So. Um, I have had some people comment under some of my videos about SEG, about whether it's actually worth them going through the effort if they're exporting so little. Um, I would say it's always worth the um, worth just filling it in. Um, it may take half an hour of your time to do and um, compile all the documentation, but over years it will build up, and if the rates that they're paying um, for SEG does go up, then that's... Um, can generate more money for you in the future. As I said, since uh, last September, the prices seem to have gone up by about 20%. Uh, so British Gas, uh, now who were paying about, uh, offering about 4p back last September, are now offering about 6.5p. But they weren't doing that then, so it would probably have been easier for me to apply to my own um, energy supplier to uh, for import to um, do all this stuff. Um, one other thing um, about the SEG payments you have to uh, watch out for is where, how often they pay and how long your contract is. Um, so most of them seem to pay out uh, if, on a six monthly basis, some pay out on a yearly month, a yearly basis, some pay on a three month basis. So just check when you're due to get your uh, payments and how long you're actually tied in for them um, because some seem, you seem to be able to swap and change to. So that's uh, my, been my experience of uh, the uh, smart export uh, guarantee tariff so far. Um, when I do get my first payment, I'll probably add it into my monthly review uh, video. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please hit that subscribe button. Um, hit the bell notification if you want to keep up, uh, get notifications whenever I release a video. And I'll see you again soon.